we got this announcement courtesy of Variety about Fred again. Fred again announces a new intimate album called 10 Days featuring Skrillex, Fortet and Inamalu Harris. Now, I'm still of the thinking that a lot of the hate that's kind of like steered towards Fred again's direction is a little bit overbaked and overdone. And being the consummate contrarian that I am, I feel like because everybody hates on Fred again, I kind of want to support him just because everyone hates him, right? But I listen to the music and I think to myself, maybe a lot of the hate is justified because I just don't understand how that music has garnered that level of hysteria and support. You see some of his shows, some of his concerts in arenas and shit, the scale of the production, the amount of people, the hysteria, the demand. And you're like, wow, this guy's got a genuine fan base. And from what I can gather, from my little knowledge of his upbringing and his origin story, most of the hype kind of came around COVID times. He kind of popped during COVID. A lot of people's careers happened during COVID because everyone was locked in at home, couldn't do much. And certain people were really smart and really on it and kind of pounced and just kept creating and putting content out there for people to enjoy, maybe take their mind off things, blah, 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 blah. And Fred again was one of the type of people that was able to do that. But apart from that kind of like, you know, COVID bubble, lockdown shit, we're all this together, help people, you know, whatever sort of nonsense, happy-go-lucky, like COVID gospel music shit that he was making. I just can't, I just can't figure out what else people find good about it. Like, it's just not that great. Like, I can understand people like Skrillex, I can understand people like Forte, but when it comes to Fred again, I just can't get down with the music. But I really want to, just to be a contrarian, because I feel like people hate on Skrillex to sort of like signify they have good taste. I feel like a lot of it happens that way. Because I feel like a lot of people, especially that commentate on music, especially dance music, electronic music, they don't really let you know with any kind of level of enthusiasm what they like. You never see them actually very much boasting about and really preaching and you know, uh, proselyting or whatever about the artists they like. They don't do that. But when it comes to hating on Fred again, they will fucking write essays about his upbringing and about him being posh and rich and his dad maybe being a Zionist or this or that, whatever. But when it comes to actually talking about people that they like, they have nothing to say. So I feel like part of me just wants to support him just because. So I am kind of looking forward to the album. I'm not going to lie. So this is Courtesy of Variety. It says Fred again has announced his new album titled 10 Days, set to release in September 6th. The album, made up of 10 songs about 10 days. Wow. <laughs> Who would have guessed it? Either it's an album that was made over 10 days or it's an album about 10 days. But we got, or it's an album about the 10 days that changed his life or the 10 days that are most important to him or the 10 days after his friend committed suicide or, or whatever. Ah, we don't care. It continues. Featuring the previously released singles, Adore You, 10 Places to Be. So it's already featuring three big singles that are already out at the moment doing numbers. This album is going to do fucking numbers. It's going to do fucking numbers. Featuring Addison Pack and Chica, a vinyl release will follow on October 25th. Additional artists listed as contributors on the album include Skrillex, Forte, Emily Lou Harris, Japanese House, um, Obin, Obongo Jaira, Josie, Jimmy Legacy. Oh, Jim Legacy. Wow, he's going to be on there. That's fucking, that's a good look for him. Very good look. That's a very good commercial look for Jim Legacy. Big up Jim Legacy. Sampa Soak, Joy Anonymous. Oh, Joy Anonymous is not Joy Orbison, I'm assuming. I'm assuming this is some other like palace wearing dickhead that rolls, cig that rolls their own cigarettes and wears white socks with Reeboks. This gives me that kind of feel. When I look at Joy Anonymous, I think of somebody that's going to wear like beanies rolled up and shit and has like a weird haircut, like for sure. But um, Scott Hardkiss, I like that name actually. Um, Fred again wrote in a post on Instagram announcing the album. There's been a big, mad, crazy moments in the last year, but basically all these are really, really quiet, small, intimate mo. Oh, fuck. Honestly, he's so cringy, isn't it? Even the captions he writes, he's so cringy. That's probably why he's so successful. He's like a, he's, he's an adult male, but he communicates like a teenage girl, like on social media, like that vulnerability, like he's got that fucking autistic tism thing going on where he's kind of like in, in the strungs of maybe going in through some sort of spasm before he makes a song. Do you know what I mean? 
They got some people like him. Oh, he's so soft and vulnerable. He's talking about his friend that offed himself on the central line. You know, all that sort of shit. He's playing his shitty fucking tunes on the NPC. Trying to mix on a fucking laptop. Like, there's things about him that are so hard to like. But because everyone hates him, I want to like him. You know, it's just... I find it hard when I read these captions, though. Let's do it again. There's been a, there's been a lot of big, mad, crazy moments in the last year. But basically, all these have been really, really small, quiet, intimate moments. Some of them are like the most intensely joyful things I've felt. And some of them are like the other side of things. And some days I don't want to speak about loads because I'm not the only person that's important day for it. Oh, fuck off. Honestly, fuck off, man. Honestly. What next? Free Palestine at the end, eh? Fucking hell. This guy, man, he is the worst. He's a, a walking cringe machine. <laughs> The album follows the ever-evolving USB, an album that Fred again has added songs to, treating it more or less like an expanding playlist, and 2023 Secret Life, a collaborative ambient project with Brian Inner. You see, when the white people do this, like, um, what you call it, updated playlist album shit, they, take the, they, they laud them, they praise them. When Kanye does an album that's unfinished but updates and is a sort of like living organism and kind of changes along the time, people chastise them about it. You see, you see the differences. You see the differences. You see how they treat us. White people do it. Oh, it's a fucking living, breathing playlist. Black people do it. Oh, Kanye's not serious. He's not finishing an album. It's like, shut up. The release of 10 Days follows Fred again's recent surprise performances at Glastonbury, where he played a 30 minute ambient set the Rising Sun pub in Pensford, Somerset, where he performed 75 fans alongside a Japanese house. The Electronic Music Wonder Kid has also been a wonderful uh, handful of dates across Europe and starting with the Way Out Festival in Sweden. To be fair to him, I do like this side about him. I do like this unconventional approach to performing. He could easily just do loads of O2 arenas if he wanted to. But I like that he takes his sound and he tries to do it in cool, interesting places for his fans he tries to like actually touch and see his fans i saw a video of him recently playing on some canal somewhere in scandinavia and it looked fucking amazing he's sitting on a canal with like his full band playing in front of an audience of people like sitting on the floor people going past on boats watching people on the other side of the river people on the bridge like it looked absolutely amazing right everybody there is white as can be clearly because it's scandinavia but it's amazing to see a lot of, of his level do kind of like grassroot up and coming artist type of shit you know obviously it's good for the social medias it's good for all that sort of shit and i can look at it cynical that way but i think it's cool because he could just easily just keep doing baseball arenas and everyone would be fine but i like that he kind of can do those big production things with pyrotechnics and massive lcds led screens but he can also go and do those things and touch his fans and hang out with them in that regard so i'm glad to see that and obviously here's all the thank yous you see on there of people that are going to be performing on the actual um, um, album itself. A lot of people on there that are not super hyped as well. So that's a good look for them. And I think it's a good look for him too because it shows that, you know, he's out there fucking um, putting on people that aren't that well known because he just likes their music. I fucking love that. And I actually can't wait for the album. I really can't wait. I'm actually do a live listening thing on that on my kick so if you're not subscribed to my kick make sure you do subscribe to my kick follow me on there it's kick.com for just agostino zinger you want to find the description the link to it in my description i'll probably do a lot more album reviews on there coming up so definitely keep an eye out on that because i can't wait to see what fred again puts out and how he makes all of the haters online seethe and rage at all the things that he does